Welcome to lesson 98 of Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. It's called A Shepherd's Judgment. Um, I thought this was a very enlightening study for myself. And so I'm, I'm very, um, very excited to do this lesson with you guys. Very excited. So let's go ahead and dive into it. First Chronicles 17, 3, and we'll go all the way to verse 6 today. It says, It came about the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, thus says the Lord, You shall not build a house for me to dwell in, for I have, I'm sorry, let me go to the next one. For I have not built in a house since the day that I brought up Israel to this day. And I have gone from tent to tent and from one dwelling place to another. In all places where I have walked with all, with all Israel, have I spoken a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I command to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built for me a house of cedar? A house of cedar. And so what we'll come to understand, he, this is actually a very enlightening passage um, in a lot of different ways. But there's one thing that he gives a little bit more, and this is how the, the, the Bible, the word of God works. It is unfolding. It's unfolding itself. It's unfolding itself. So when you read Judges, you probably did not realize that you were reading a book about who? About shepherds of Israel. What did he say? In all places where I have walked with all Israel, have I spoken a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people? So we have to understand that once again, the, our definitions in today's day are not the same as what he means in his word and truth and what his vocab is, what his definitions are. And to him, a judge is a shepherd. He said he commanded the judges of Israel to shepherd his people. That was their job was to shepherd them. It was to guide them. It was to tend to them. It was to do those different things, right? And so, and we'll find the same thing, we'll find the same thing with the disciples, and especially we'll see with Peter, with when he was restored, and he asked him three times, do you love me? He says, then tend to my sheep, right? He says, then, then, um, he says, then tend to my sheep, tend to my lambs. He talks about feeding his lambs, feeding his sheep. So we have to understand, though, and we'll talk about Peter in a second also when it comes to being a judge. We have to understand this, 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 a judge and a shepherd are the same thing. But we'll get into some things today to understand that you cannot be a shepherd. A disciple is someone who's being made into a shepherd. You cannot be one of, a part of the five of the, the fivefold ministry. Where we have the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, and the pastor. You cannot be those things. And be unwilling to judge. And be unwilling to judge. Because a shepherd and a judge goes hand in hand. In hand. Guess what? How, is a, how can you be a shepherd of a flock of sheep, but you're not willing to judge if a wolf is a wolf? <laughs> you're not willing to judge if that's good fruit or bad fruit for your own sheep to eat. You, you can't be a shepherd. And so we're going to this word judge. Um, it means to judge, govern, vindicate, punish, to act as lawgiver or judge or governor, to rule, govern, judge, to decide controversy, to execute judgment, uh, discriminating, vindicating, condemning and punishing. A theophanic advent for final judgment, to enter into controversy, plead, have controversy together to be judged. Judge, opponent law. So we have to understand that to govern and to judge are the same thing. To govern and to judge are the same thing. Interesting enough, how we talk about these disciples are also being made into, they're, made, they're being made to, to shepherds. So they're also judges. Interesting enough, when you go back to the book of Judges, there are 12 judges named. There are 12 judges named in, 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 in judges. Shepherds. They're shepherds. Athneo, which means lion of God. Ahud says, I will give thanks. I will be praised or undivided or a union. Shamgar means sword. Deborah means bee. Gideon means hewer. Tola means worm. 
Jair means he enlightens. Jetha means he opens. Abzan, their whiteness. Elan, Terebinth, mighty. Abdon, servile. Samson, like the sun. Twelve judges. Twelve disciples. Interesting. Very perfect things in the word of God there. But we have to understand that to be a judge is to be a shepherd. These are shepherds. When you're reading their stories, you're learning about shepherds. A lot of the time, you are seeing... We talk about Samson. That's all people do in the Bible. They, they, they focus on one sin, one fault with people in the Old Testament. But they don't, you're not really learning about the overall... How do I say this? Essence or being or what it looks like to be that be in that role of God. Samson was a shepherd. And it was a great parable of him being this mighty, this, this great strong man. Because guess what? To be a shepherd, you'd have you have to be strong. You do. <clears throat> Gotta be strong. Now we know some things in this definition. Um, you know, act as lawgiver, judge, or govern, right? To decide to decide controversy. You have to decide it. To execute judgment. We have a couple examples in the word of God where he's literally telling us. And he says this is who he is himself. And in the Bible, it calls Christ the chief shepherd. So he is the ultimate example of what it means to be a shepherd. Ezekiel 34, 20 and 20, 22, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and with shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns until you have scattered them abroad. Therefore, I will deliver my flock and they will no longer be a prey and I will judge between one sheep and another. So we have to understand when people were sent to be deliverers of Israel and judges of Israel. And I, I believe we're going to read something in a second about this, but he literally says that he delivered Israel out of Egypt by his great judgments. By his great judgments. And this right here, he says, I will deliver my flock. And he's talking about that he will judge. He says, I will deliver. And they will no longer be a prey. And I will judge between one sheep and another. I will judge. That judgment is equates to deliverance. We're going to understand the day that we are all waiting for is children of God is the day of the final judgment. Judgment day. Why? Because we will be delivered from all evil by that judgment. When that judgment happens, all evil will be in a lake of fire. Everyone who, who causes strife, everyone, <laughs> everyone that is hateful, everything that's a stumbling block to doing right by our Father, all of those things will be thrown to a lake of fire. We will be delivered. So through judgment comes deliverance. I know some people won't want to hear this. They won't. They don't want to hear this because we want some kind of type of big prophetic show when it comes to being delivered from from uh, the evil things in our life. But sometimes it's by a proper and righteous judgment that one becomes delivered. When you begin become to judge righteously, which means that some of us are in distress because we have not accepted the righteous judgment of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. It says in Judges 2, 16, which is Judges, which is the, the book of shepherds. Well, you need to re rethink that book. Shepherds 2, 16. <laughs> shepherds. Then the Lord raised up judges, who delivered them from the hands of those who plundered them. So the judges, like I just said, were sent to deliver. Which means I'm trying to tell you this. There are people that are, you are being sent to as a shepherd. And if you're in this, this deep in kingdom school, you are, you are right at the borderline of becoming the shepherd that God has chose you to be. You're, you're, you're almost there. You, you've moved out of the first three classes are for sheep. This class you are building up and, and becoming more mature and being a shepherd. 
We, when our first letter we wrote, the uh, the let me wrote that we read the letter to Theatira. When we read that letter, we had that lesson. That letter, his promises were that were to rule with a rod of iron. That means he's trying to make you to a ruler, a governor. There we go, a judge, a shepherd. So you who are being made to be a shepherd, you are sent to deliver people. But you understand it's by your judgments that be, people become delivered. Ezekiel 44, 23 to 24. And in, in, in order to attain this proper type of judgment as a or have this type of heart as a shepherd. You got to let go of the universalist. You cannot be a shepherd and be a universalist. What is a universalist? That's someone who believes that nobody's going to hell. Nobody's actually doing wrong. Nobody's going to a lake of fire. Everybody's going to be saved. You know, everyone's saved. We're all good, whatever it is. And Christ is literally telling you himself that someone tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in your name. We cast out demons in your name. And I'll say to them, I never knew you depart from me. You would practice lawlessness. Why do you think that he says in the last passage we just read in Ezekiel, he said he will judge between one sheep and another. Some of us are not willing to judge between the sheep. It's okay to say that one sheep is wrong and the other one's right. It doesn't make you not a sheep of the Lord, but right now you are wrong. You are putting yourself on the wrong side. Ezekiel 44, 23 to 24 says, More where they shall teach my people. So they shall teach my people. Ezekiel 44, we're talking about the ministers to the Lord. Moreover, they, the ministers to the Lord, shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Which means if you are listening to a minister and they are not causing you to discern between what is holy and what is profane and also even by saying that we have to add the words in truth. What is the word of God revealing as unholy, uh, I mean, what is holy and what is profane? What is the word of God revealing about what is <clears throat> unclean and what is clean? <clears throat> it says these ministers to him, <clears throat> sorry, in a dispute, they shall take their stand to judge. Which means if you are not willing to judge, <clears throat> sorry, who is right and who is wrong, who is operating in holiness, who is operating in unholiness, who is operating in righteousness, who is operating in unrighteousness, you cannot truly be a minister to him. You can't be a shepherd of his. You cannot be a judge of his. And now I love this last part, which I, I guess I got to have the verse. I said in truth, but he adds it himself. He's going to make sure to tell you the truth that they shall judge it according to what my ordinances, not how anyone feels, not what people think, <clears throat> not the cultural climate of the time, his eternal ordinances. That is the word of Christ and his law. Which I keep getting ahead of the verse. I guess it's just the spirit of my heart. They shall also what? Keep my laws and my statutes and all my appointed feasts and sanctify my Sabbaths. It's hard to judge by something you do not keep. <clears throat> As Paul writes, he says, is the law sinful? He said, no, it's not sinful. I'm not saying it's sinful. He, saw, he calls the righteous judgment of God. He says the law is righteous, holy, and good. Through the law comes knowledge of sin. But it's hard to judge righteously by something that you do not keep yourself. So how can I judge by his ordinances if I don't keep them? It's not possible. Now, interesting thing here, okay? Interesting thing here. 
Matthew 7, 1 to 2, okay? He says, do not judge so that you will not be judged. From the same way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you, okay? Do not be judged so that you will not be judged. Now, this is actually the, how do I say this? The can be the oxymoron of being a judge or a shepherd. And specifically the Lord's judgment because his judgment is that no one should condemn another. So as a judge, <clears throat> he's judging you for judging. So because you judge, I'm going to judge you by that judgment that you judge someone else with. Because you shouldn't have judged them anyway. As a shepherd, I'm judging that you're judging. <laughs> I'm judging that you're condemning. I'm judging that you're this, you know. We understand that judgment is reserved for the shepherd. It's not for the crowd. It's not for everyone. Like I said, very, very interesting oxymoron there, but it is the truth. And that's why it says, in, um, I believe Isaiah 54, 17, it says that no weapon formed against me. And it says that any tongue that accuse me in judgment, I will condemn. Because that's the Lord's judgment. It says that it literally says in Revelation 12, that the devil was the one who accuses the brethren of sin. That's the devil. So yes, if you judge, if you accuse me of sin... I'm going to condemn you. But that's the judgment of a, of a true shepherd of the Lord. It's very interesting. <clears throat> John 7, 24. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So I want to give you this because you have to know the whole gospel. Okay? He is judging, judging by righteous judgment. But his righteous judgment is that you do not judge. It's it's a it's a hey, it's an interesting thing. Very, 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 very interesting thing. But I want to go back because you notice that it says about what he says he would do to people, okay? Which is a difference. Ezekiel 44, he says that his his shepherds will cause people, the second line, look at it, it says, and cause them to discern. Between the unclean and the clean. It didn't say they would condemn the unclean. Or condemn the clean. It says he would cause them to discern. So discernment is for everyone. But judgment is reserved for the shepherd. Who is judging. Based on the obviously the laws of God. Which the law of God is that we love each other and we have mercy and we have forgiveness so obviously the other side of mercy is condemnation the other side of forgiveness is uh, i'll say this unforgiveness or bitterness however you want to put that the other side of love is hate but judge righteous judgment and so once again he, the they're not going to judge by what things look like they're not going to judge by how things, how people say they, it feels. They're judged with righteous judgment. And like he said, that's by the ordinance of God in Ezekiel 44. Now, once again, he's talking to his 12 disciples. And he's literally telling them that you guys are going to be 12 judges. Like we have 12 judges in, in the book of Judges. So it says in Matthew 19, 27, 28. Then Peter said to him, behold, we have left everything and followed you. What then will there be for us? And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So literally, like I said, he's making his disciples, who, go, who are shepherds in their own right, he's also making them to be judges. Judges, which we see these thrones in Revelation. Revelation he's not lying to him, he's telling the truth. He knows that already, and this is what John saw um, many decades later. He already knew it. He has he already seen it. He set it up. He's the, he's the orchestrator of it. Revelation 20, verse 4, Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus, because of the word of God. 
And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, and they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now, you should know by now, in, in this, this deep in kingdom school, we're talking about the 144,000, the, the 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, of the 12, which like he's told them, you will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Tell them the truth. Shepherds are judges. Now, once again, John 20, 21 to 23. So Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the father has sent me. I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have not been retained. So not only did he tell them that, in the, in, that when the regeneration happens, you're going to sit on 12 thrones. When he gave them the Holy Spirit, he told them, I am giving you the power to judge. That if you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. You have the power to forgive sins. And you also have the power to retain sins. And we see it show up with Peter in Acts 5, where we realize that, no, it is true that those he sent as shepherds, he gave the right to judge, and God is behind their judgment. But a man named Ananias, with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself. With his wife's full knowledge and bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. And as he heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came over all who heard it. The young men got up and covered him, and after carrying him out, they buried him. So once again, he's telling him, you're lying to me. It's not about me. You're lying to the Holy Spirit whom Christ has put inside of me and has given me the power and anointing to judge. And we see that through Peter's judgment in this scenario, the man falls dead. Now, does this mean that every shepherd... If you cross their judgment, you're going to die. It doesn't mean that. There's also the reality of spiritual death. Which, you know, spiritual death is centered around what? It's, it's, well, you should know this by now also if you're in kingdom school. And I, I'm sorry I keep saying that. But there's a lot of things we, I'm not going to keep giving cards for. You should, you should know. We talked about this in the very beginning. That the price of spiritual death or what? Their distress, their fear, and their shame. So sometimes when you've crossed a shepherd and you're on the wrong side of a shepherd's judgment... It's the stress, it's fear, and it's shame that they will come over you that will be unshakable unless you, how do I say this, repent, roam the right. And I love this also because you have to realize that there are people that Christ has given the power and the anointing to judge, and their judgment matters. <clears throat> and you can't shake it. You can cast them off and call them evil. You can cast them off and... Say they're this and they're that and you can try to gossip about them and persecute them all you want to and you still can't shake the fear. You still can't shake the distress and you still can't shake the shame that you live in. Can't shake it. Lesson 98 of Hunger Thirst for Righteousness was called a shepherd's judgment. Very enlightened to, to get that connection between shepherds and judgment. I would employ you also to go back and read Judges again and... and um, we look at that through a different lens, a different lens. No longer look at it as just as these judges that sit in the courtroom. That's not what they are. They're shepherds. They're shepherds. And so, tithe and offering, we do tithe and offering. NFH pulls $800 a week to ensure that God's word can and will continue through this ministry. Uh, we'll then redistribute all collect the funds evenly back out to those that gave you the first to bless you. That's cash out money sign Christ King Way. That's PayPal at MFH Ministry. Um, like I said, by now, and I know that right now I'm recording these lessons, and uh, they'll be actually... Um, within the actual school platform uh, a couple years from now or really one to two years from now but by then we all, we already have our um, our giving commitment to even be a part of 
Kingdom School, but know that uh, once again, we take out what's needed for the work of God and we'll send that back out to those, uh, evenly back out to those that are a part of Kingdom School. We will be the first to bless you. So that's Lesson 98, A Shepherd's Judgment. I hope it blessed you guys. Be well.